Yo, what is up guys, this is Abla here, and uh, today I'm going to bring you the return of the RTR series, uh, and today is going to be on motion tracking. The reason I was away is because I just got my new Mac, uh, which you might be able to see, you might be able to notice, you might not. Uh, it's a 15 inch MacBook Pro, because I sort of needed the portability more than my desktop, and I just swapped over and sorted things out of that. So, it took me till now to sort of be ready to give you guys a tutorial, so... First of all, for this motion tracking, you're going to want a cinematic. I'm going to put one in the description. I'm not going to put the exact one I've used because the one I've used for this tutorial isn't amazing. Um, I was just sort of, I couldn't be bothered to record it at the moment, but I'll record after I've finished. Uh, yeah, you're going to need this uh, cinematic and you're going to want to render it, adjust it to the size you want and the length. And you're going to want to hop into After Effects first or render out as a TIFF sequence. So if we go into After Effects, you'll see that. I've here. I've just literally cropped out the uh, spectating marks, and I've just made it to five seconds because I just wanted to be short. And I'm going to motion track in this bit here, just here. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just going to get composition, add to render queue. Uh, it will say lossless. I'm going to change lossless to to sequence, and then that's all I need to do. And then the uh, save point, you need to make a new document. <sighs> I'm going to call it RTR MT, the motion track. It's a new folder because it's obviously going to make loads of different pictures. And then just press save, it doesn't matter what you call it. Um, and then press render. And that shouldn't take too long to render. I'll press that up even quicker. Hurry up! Uh, so, yeah, this bit is uh, more to what you guys want to do. So, if you have your own thing, you can cut it and make it as long as you want and wherever you want you can make it in several different parts or whatever but I've literally just sort of clipped a bit out of one of my motion tracks I've done for my latest edit that I'm working on at the moment so once that's rendered which it is doing uh, we can close After Effects, not going to save it so there's no point point. and we're just going to hop straight into Bougie I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've actually used Bougie on this computer so I hope it works <laughs> um, Right. Oh yeah, I should show you. After you've rendered, you'll get uh, go away. After you've rendered, you'll get that folder, and it's full of frame by frame of the motion track. So let's do that. Uh, welcome to Vizu. Okay, cancel. Yeah, it was the first time I've used it. So if I make it full screen, and then I go to import sequence, and it's called Sarah Mark. Don't ask why. It's my mum. <laughs> uh, and just go to RT motion track and just click on the first one and then just press open and then you're going to change the frame rate to 59.94 hit apply and then it'll import it in then you're going to want to change it to 59.94 again so it makes it 59.94 frames um, next you're just going to want to track features so just hit the track features button you can change the sensitivity I'm just going to leave it as normal because it should be alright and tick fast tracking so it's all quick and just press start and that shouldn't take too long to go through. Like, as you can see, it's just picking out all the points on each frame to try and find a, like somewhere it can grab onto. So um, you can actually motion track a, a, a point, basically, like you would in After Effects. So you select a point and it locks onto it. This is what Bougie is doing for you, and it also works out like uh, walls and where stuff are and stuff. It's quite clever. Uh, obviously I should say this is a very short motion track so yours may take like five minutes to do this um, if it's a longer one and this is going to be a very long tutorial guys it's probably about 20 to 30 minutes so it's the one I should while you while you know that you'll see it on the video but I'm just going to do everything in one so it's just in one upload so I'd have to upload twice right uh, finally done So as you can see, it's tracked our points for us. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so we can actually motion track these points. So you're going to camera solve the track. So just literally tap camera solve. You just want to press optimize cut camera path for smoothness and just press start. And that shouldn't be as long. That should be very quick. And now just make points out of the points you've tracked. Um, right. 
that's it given us. So if we look here, you'll see these points are stationary in our track. So that means we can grab hold of those points to choose where we want to keep it. So I'm going to go for these points on the ground because they don't move. And I'm just going to go to, oh, sorry, scene geometry, add coordinate frame. Um, I'm used to doing this so much, I like to go so fast. Um, you know, I want to change from origin to Z axis. And then your Z axis is going to be backwards. So I'm going to choose these ones. You want to make sure it's roughly straight with how you want to have it. And then just press select them both, holding down control or command, and then just press connect selected. Then you're going to want to add another coordinate. Then you're going to want to change that to the X axis. And I'm just going to select this one and hold down command and select that one, which is roughly straight. And then just press connect selected again. And lastly, you're going to add one more and you're going to want to do origin. And then you're going to want to do it there. And just press connect select. And then update coordinate frame and then you can close it. And if we add a text ob test object, sorry, you can see that if I get rid of that, that the object stays in the same place, which means it's been successfully motion tracked. As you can see, it doesn't move, and that's where your text will be. Now we want to export the camera solve to Cinema 4D. So just going to get it export, export camera solve, and export type. Can I change to Cinema 4D? Obviously, find somewhere to save it. So save it wherever you want to save it. I'm just going to save it in my documents. I'm going to call it RTR Track. Actually, RTR Cinema C C 4D. 4D. Right, saved. And then all you want to do is change nothing except scale to 100. It's a very important part, so if you don't do that, it won't work. So then you press save. And it should be saving. There you go. And it's saved. And now we can exit Buju, and that's that bit done. And now it's just all down to what you want to do in Cinema 4D. So let's go to Cinema 4D. Let's open that up. And we'll start on this bit. This bit is, I'm not going to go into too much detail with this because this is where your creativity is used, like you can do what you want. So uh, You can just play about, you can learn new techniques to do this, but I'll just show you how to add text and add in your own thing. So I need to find where it is. There you go. And just literally open it. You're not going to want to change this. This has to stay at 10 very important as well, so 100 for the first part and then 10 for this part, just press OK and then if we make it so you can see the whole thing, you'll see the axis actually change with the cinematic so you know it's been tracked. Next thing we're going to add is materials, just going to double tap double tap that material and take off specular and on colour, just hit the big bar and it'll come up and I'm going to import from my motion tracks, so I'm going to find the folder I've saved it to, which is there, and then just click on the first one and that's now imported our background onto the material. Press no for that. Um, now we're going to want to animate the material so it actually doesn't keep the same frame but goes all the way from start to finish. So I'm going to tap the big bar again and then go to animation and just press calculate and I'll do it all for you. You now I want to put this back to zero. Um, you're going to want to hit that four arrows thing and go to background. Now all you want to do is drag that onto your background and now you have your successfully motion tracked cinematic and all you're going to want to do is just add a plane first of all a plane I should probably add just press the cube go to plane and then what to put the material onto the plane you're going to hold down control command and then click the material while holding control and then drag it onto plane oh, let's see. I didn't hold down control so I'm going to click and drag onto the plane while holding control and then it just transfers it over and then you're going to want to go tags, cinema 4D tags, compositing and then check compositing with background, uncheck self shadowing and uncheck car shadows now we're just going to want to make the plane as big as we can so we go to the plane on the width just spam load of nines as I've done there and I'm also going to copy it so I can put it onto the next part there you go so now it's a huge plane so you know your shadow is going to be fine and if I just pre-render here, you'll see it all blends in when you pre-render. Next part, we're just going to add a text quick. I'm just going to leave it as the normal standard text. I'll add it in, no text. Uh, I'm going to change it to middle. Just move it along a bit to about there. Um, and this is the bit where I say you can get creative. You can just do what you like here. So I'm just going to leave it plain. I'll make it say 8 RTR. It's not too lazy. <laughs> And I'm just going to add a light finally to finish it off. So I'm just going to click light, 
move it to the middle of the text, and then move it up, I'd say about, I don't know, 700 should be a reasonable amount, so then, oh sorry, yeah, to make it a shadow, move it up, then go to shadow and shadow map soft, and that gives the light a shadow. And there you are, there is your finished motion track. Um, obviously, I'd have to mask out that there, but if I was to make it smaller, it wouldn't affect it. So, if you are going to have objects in the way, you got to like, think about that. So, even if I move this over here, that will solve that problem. There, boom, done. And it looks, looks realistic after you've added the shadow. So, this is obviously, the main bit you want is just the light to be shadow map soft. And you can vary the height depending on how thick your text is and how big it is and how small it is. Um, and you also want your plane with the compositing tag and the background which you dragged on. Uh, finally, to render, all you're going to have to do is go to this, not the one with the orange square around it, not the orange one, but the white one, and I'll bring out your render settings. You get an output, and you just change from current frame to all frames, and everything should come as standard, 1280 by 720, 72 resolution pixels, and 60 frame rate. Again, you want to go to save, and you want to change the format to QuickTime Movie, and then you just want to call it what you want. So I'm just going to call it RTR, and press save. And then, all you need to do to render is just literally tap the orange thing, and it will start rendering. And that is your motion track. You just literally just have to let it render. So that is it, guys. I will put a download in the description for a cinematic. I'll also put some of my material packs in there uh, for you guys and maybe some nice fonts for you guys as well. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, which I hope you did, I did rush through things, but if you got like if you got stuck along the way, feel free to PM me or comment on what you found difficult. And also I'll stop this because my computer's I don't want to make it noises while I'm trying to record. Um, yeah, if you got stuck, comment, PM me. And just pause the video if you're taking your time over something so you don't miss out. So yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll try to get the next Road to Render episode out soon, which will be um, probably how to edit a trick shot or something like that. Something along those lines. I'll show you a couple of ideas I have. So yeah, thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.